I guess we're starting with debits and credits now anyway, so now we are officially recording. So when you ask questions, that talk really loud so you know it's going to be on a YouTube video. Okay, it is going to be a YouTube video. But you, you don't have to go to YouTube or anything. You can get it uh, directly off of Moodle. All right, guys. There are two things that I want you to memorize. Two. I'm going to give you the entire model of accounting today. I'm not kidding. And there's only going to be two things that I want you to memorize. Everything else is common sense. It's understanding business. Uh, the reason I became an accountant, I think, is because it is just so easy. And a lot of people think it's impossible. What a wonderful field. It's a piece of cake. They pay you a whole bunch of money to do it because a whole bunch of people refuse to memorize two things and then just figure everything comes out. I teach an executive MBA, she's an executive MBA student, and there's a whole bunch of people sitting in there that are just terrified of accounting. And the reason they're terrified of accounting is because when they, they were your age, they were in a class where they memorized everything. And they're like, oh my God, there's too much to memorize. Well, yeah. How many different things can a company possess? How many different things? An infinite number. We keep creating more all the time. But you know what? Everything that they possess, everything they control, we call asset. We have one name for it, and we always account for it exactly the same way. How many different people in different companies and in different ways can you owe money to? All the people on earth you could owe money to. All the businesses on earth you could owe money to. You could owe money at the bank for a car loan, for a house mortgage, for a line of credit. Are you with me on this, guys? How many different ones are there? It's almost infinite. Guess what? They're all called liabilities. We account for them exactly the same way. Oh, my gosh. How many different uh, costs could you incur in a business? How many different things can you use up in a business? Those are going to be your costs. How many different things, huh? Almost infinite. We're creating new ones all the time, right? Guess what? They're all called expenses. We account for them the same way. How many ways can you earn profits? How many different ways? How many things can you sell people? How many goods and services? How many different products are there that you can sell? Oh, for crying out loud. Almost infinite. We're trying to create new ones all the time, aren't we? Right? More and more and more. Guess what? They're all revenues. This is unbelievably easy. Unbelievably easy. Once you know how to account for the types of things there are, you guys may. All you got to do is figure out, oh, is this my possession? Is this an obligation? I have a liability, in other words, right? Is this a representation of my wealth? You've read about all this stuff, right? You guys have all read this chapter. Representation of wealth, which is your equity. There's only a few of those, right? A few places we keep track of. By the way, places where you keep track of things, we call accounts. And accounts is where you keep track of stuff. By the way, you're going to have a hell of a time taking notes in here. Some of you are doing it, and it's just fine, but you don't have to. Because everything's in the book, everything's on these videos, right? It's okay, and I'm going to say things over and over and over and over until you get it, okay? That's how we're going to do this. And once you see the model, once you see the picture of how all this stuff works, it's easy. You'll be able to go through this quiz, this bang, 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 right? Okay, so let's start with the two things that you need to memorize. I'll start with one of them. We already did it. I asked you what debit meant last time. What does this debit mean? Less. What else does it mean? Nothing. Got it? Debit means put it on the left. So it's debit. That went away. It's debit, which, you know, it's debt, D-E-B-I-T. Debit, right? Debit. We use D-R as an abbreviation for debit. There's no R. All right, we're doing it. Okay, debit. Okay, debit. What does it mean, everybody? Everybody, this is first grade. What does it mean? Left. Left. Excellent. Don't ever think it means something else or you will drive yourself insane. Ah, this is why people think accounting is hard. They don't buy in. Why does debit mean left? Okay, what's your name? Pilot. Pilot. Why is his name Pilot? Because somebody put that label on it. Why does that mean left? Because we don't want to use left because that makes accounting easy. I don't know. Right? It just is. Just accept it. Memorize it, please. Okay? Now, we, you, have you heard this thing of balancing the books? That means the left side is the right side. I'm not kidding. Have you ever heard the term balance sheet? That means the left side is the right side. I'm not kidding. Really, it's just simple. Okay? 
the debits must equal the credits. The left side must equal the right side. And then we made this up a couple hundred years ago, right? There's a little system. It's a very, very simple mathematical system. It's not magic. Okay? It's really simple. So guess what? If debit means left and the debits have to equal the credits, guess what, gang? What is credit? At least there's an R in that one. What does credit mean? Right. That's it. The left side equals the right side. You have to memorize the credit means right. What for? It's a waste of memory. <clears throat> you know the debit means left? If you want to memorize credit means right, I'm okay with that. But then please don't memorize debit means left. Got it? Don't waste your memory. We have a limited amount. Computers don't really. We do. Okay, don't waste your memory. It's common sense. If one's left, the other one's got to be right. Keep them straight, okay? And we are going to use this. Everybody good? Debit means? Left. Credit means? Right. When I see you next time, you're going to have that ingrained in your soul. What's your name? Corey. What is your name? Corey. Corey. Again, we don't know why. Right? Next name, next phrase. Okay? But this is a label somebody put on you, right? Your parents. Okay? Okay? Right? So, send in for left. Is yeah. synonym for left. Yes, no, it's synonym, right? You said that. All right. It's <laughs> scary. Okay, anyway, yeah. All right. So, synonym for left is that. What does credit mean? Right. Yeah. Again, why? Just cut. Okay, just cut. It is. We're going to use it, okay? So, next time I see you guys, you're going to know it as well as your name, right? I've always known. I was born knowing this. Well, probably not. Somebody told me once. Okay, anyway. All right. Then, what we've got besides that, left and right stuff, is we are going to have five different kinds of accounts, you guys. Five places where we keep, oh good, five places where you keep track of stuff. You see how good I am with technology. Nice. Huh? Okay, anyway, five different places where we keep track of things. You, we, I mentioned balance sheet. A balance sheet is a piece of paper, right? Where we write down all of our stuff, all our possessions, and we write down everything we owe against that, right? which is going to be all of our liabilities, and the difference is what we're worth, which is our equity. Okay? So what we're doing is literally this. They gave me the accounting equation in the chapters. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Right, guys? You might have called it capital if you had accounting in high school. Capital and equity are the same thing. Okay? So our assets equal our liabilities plus our equity. That's a balance sheet. You see it's imbalanced, the left side, oh, it's the left side equals the right side. How about that? It's amazing how complex this is. Not, right? Simple. Okay, the assets, these are assets. All my assets equal my liabilities plus my equity. Do you guys agree with this? My assets are all my possessions. Not things I own. Be careful. It's not what you own. Anybody in here uh, have a car that they bought and they're still paying for? Okay? You're in that situation. The rest of you don't necessarily touch it. You don't need to. Don't do that. But let's say you have a car and it's a $20,000 car and you put $4,000 down on it. How much of the car do you own? $4,000. What's the other $16,000? Money you owe the bank. Am I right? You only own four of it. But you have control over the whole $20,000 car. So what we say is we have an asset, $20,000. Everybody good? And we have a liability, 16, and we have wealth, equity, of four. Okay? And all we're going to do is we're going to keep track of that. So you can tell people where you're at. When you're running your business, when you're running your personal life, where am I at? Okay? What do I have? If you want to borrow money from somebody, if you want somebody to invest in your business, they need to know, have a picture, know where you're at now. Okay, if they're going to join in, don't dispose. All right, so what we got is 20 here equals the 16 here plus the 4 here. That's how the little system's going to work. It's just not a big deal, is it? Okay, so our assets are all of our possessions. You guys have a lot of possessions, I bet. Every piece of clothing you have is an asset. So you need that. Every single one is a different asset. Somebody got it? Every pencil you own, every pen you own is an asset. Every one of your books is an asset. How many assets does General Motors have? Billions. Right? But you know what? They count from all the same way. Right? 
the key. It doesn't matter how big the business is. It doesn't matter how small it is. We do exactly the same way. All right? So your assets to your possessions. What are the liabilities? Everything you owe against them. What's the equity? The portion of them you own. Right? That's it. Everybody good? Representation of your wealth. That's all this is. Okay? Does this make sense to you that all of your possessions, either you are done paying for them and therefore that's part of your wealth, or you are still paying for them and that's your liabilities? Does it is it just common sense that either your assets, you own them, or you're still paying for them? That's it, isn't it? Is there any other possibility? No. So of course assets equal liabilities plus equity. Right? And you've got accounting that's going to be possible. No. Really simple. Okay? All right. That's the balance sheet, gang. That stuff is going to be the balance sheet. Okay? That didn't work. Oh, here. That stuff is going to be the balance sheet. Okay? Now, it's right here. Both of these are the balance sheet they talk about. It's also called a statement of financial position, which is what it really is. It's the financial position I'm in right now. But it's a balance sheet because the debit's equal to credit, and we refuse to give away that thing. We like it. Yes. When I own the car out, when I own the car right now, I have 20,000 assets and 20,000 equity because they own the whole thing and zero liabilities. Or you could be like my wife and you buy a $30,000 Volvo. Right, a number of years ago, and you have a 30,000 asset, a 30,000 liability, and zero equity. <laughs> we didn't want to take any stock investments. <laughs> but we literally gave them nothing and drove away. We have enough money to buy the car. <laughs> so they were crazy, huh? They made me have a life insurance policy on this. Yeah. I wonder why. Yeah, okay, anyway. All right. So here we go. This is going to be the income statement. These are kind of new terms. Revenues, and I'll use R for that, and expenses, or REV, I guess. Expenses, because I already used E over here for equity. I'll use EX for that or something. These are two more accounts. So we need to know what revenues and expenses are. Let me ask you about your wealth. If you think equity is a representation of your wealth, and this, this, this just makes sense, your assets less your liabilities, right? Is what you're worth. All your stuff, your possessions, less everything you owe against them, the difference is your equity, which is your wealth. Does that just make sense? Yeah, okay. So obviously, if liabilities plus equity is assets, you could have assets less liabilities. Is that clear? Everybody good with that? Math class. Okay, anyway, right? So that makes sense, doesn't it? That, my, my wealth. Do you guys have wealth, you know? Do you have assets? Possessions are yours. Yes. Do you have liabilities? Probably a few, a little bit, right? Not much. Most of the parents do. Okay? Thank you. He's thinking, did my parents ever support me? Good. Yeah, okay, anyway, no, no, I can't remember that either. All right, anyway, thanks. So, okay, if you have assets, don't you? And how did you get them? Oh, by the way, you have more assets than your liabilities, so therefore you have positive equity. But everybody agree with that? You have more assets than your liabilities. Yeah. Especially seeing as you're acquiring. No. <laughs> yeah, especially, especially seeing as you are acquiring them. Knowledge, which is valuable asset, right? So your assets are growing, even if it's you, know, right? Very well. But they're growing, okay? And your assets are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? Of course, your liabilities are probably growing too, buying money from you right now, okay? Where does your wealth come from? Where does your equity come from? I can think of two places it can come from. You might have earned it in the past. We're gonna, that's going to be revenues less expenses, which is going to be net income. Now, this is not going to be a type of account. It's just the difference. Net income is the difference between your revenues and your expenses, OK? It's the difference between is your net income. It's not an account. You just, it's just a subtraction. Everybody got it? That's if my revenues are more than my expenses, right? Then I have net income. If my expenses are more than my revenues, I have a net loss. You guys read about this stuff, right? We'll talk about what these are. OK, just get it solved. OK, anyway. So that's one place my net income can, can come from. And I could keep those earnings, right? And we have a really clever name for earnings that we kept. We call them retained earnings. Accountants are really boring. We call things what they are. Try to keep it as simple as possible. Business is complex enough, right? 
So let's just keep it simple. Maybe that's why everybody thinks you have to fall in love, right? You're bored right now. You're not bored yet. You're not bored yet. I'll bore you before we're done. I promise. Yeah, I promise. Okay, anyway, so here we go. We are going to have retained earnings, and all that is is I'm going to take my net income and I'm going to add it to retained earnings, which is going to be my wealth. Okay, it's a representation of my wealth. So one place is you earned. Now, you guys know. I do not believe that you earned all your wealth. You have assets that you didn't earn in life, right? Where did they come from? I do this with my grandkids every day of my life. We went out and visited my new granddaughter who, who having a birthday this Wednesday, right? And we're going to do it. She's out for the morning, so we're going to do it on FaceTime, right? I get to do that through FaceTime. Okay, it's so good. Okay, we went and visited. It cost me 500 bucks to go shopping for an 11-month-old kid. I wasn't even there. Heard about it, right? 500 bucks in these clothes for the world, right? Okay? Man, we don't see what happens. What's the deal? We gave it to her. She has possessions. Does she owe anything against it? No. So is she worth $500 more? <laughs> I guess. She's got 500 more assets, 500 more wealth, right? It was given to her. So did your grandparents give you anything? Yeah. Did your parents give you anything? Yes. What do we call that in a business? The owners just invest in the business. I'm investing in the grandkids. Yeah. Okay? And they invest in your, your parents are paying the tuition maybe, right? Okay? They're investing in you. They're investing in your future. They have to do that. Okay? So what's the deal? This is called contributing capital. So we either earn, right, and retain the earnings, or it's contributing to the business. So we got two types of equity. Contributed capital and retained earnings, guys. Okay, so this is going to be contributed capital, right? Everybody got it? Now, what are revenues and what are expenses? Revenues are a representation of the earnings process. You went and bought your book from the bookstore, right? The sales price of that book, they would record as sales revenue, got it? Record that as sales revenue, the price you paid. Okay, everybody good about that? When you go to McDonald's and you buy product from them, huh? What is it? Sales revenue for them. Ever got the idea? When you go to the dentist, right? That's service revenue, we call it, because they provide the service. Sales are when you provide a product, a tangible product, okay? Okay, goods, okay? If it's services, we call it service revenue, but they're both revenue. It's a representation of increasing my wealth by selling things. Everybody got it? My wealth's going up as my revenue's going up. Did you guys agree with that? Okay. Now then, expenses. What are expenses? Expenses are all the costs I incurred to get my revenues. Everybody got it? All the costs I incurred to get my revenues are called expenses. As I use things up in an effort to generate revenue, huh? I'm trying to earn revenue. I'm trying to generate revenue. So as I use things up, like if you work for somebody, your salary is going to be salary expenses. Got it? Okay. For the bookstore, they gave you the book. That book was inventory, we would have called it for them while they held it, an asset of theirs. When they give it to you to earn the revenues, the cost of the book becomes something called cost of goods sold, which is an expense. It's the major cost of getting you to buy the book. They have to give you the book, or you won't buy the book. Right? You won't give them your money. Everybody good? By the way, money is a tough term. Money means value, right? Anything of value is major than money. Assets are, liabilities are, equity is, revenue expense. Money then is, right, anything of value. But money also means cash, so we need to be careful. If you mean cash, what we say is cash. Cash is an asset. Cash isn't revenues, right? Cash is an asset. Cash is the cash. Right? Cash in my pocket, cash in the bank. Everybody got the idea? That's an, that's an asset. Now, yeah, they might give me cash when I earn the revenue. You might have paid cash for your books. When you gave them the cash, right, and they gave you the book, they would debit cash, right? And you can Oh, and they would credit sales revenue. Okay. So everybody get the idea what assets are, liabilities are, equity is, revenue, and expense. You need to know this. Next time I see you, just have it ingrained in you, okay? I've got them. I've got these five. There are only five. 
everything, all the billions of things that there are to keep track about their assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expense, billions of them. All of them, all you have to do is when you see a transaction, what did I get? What did I give up? And then what is it? Is it an asset, a liability, an equity, a revenue, an expense? And once I know that, I know how to account for it. It's powerful, right? Really powerful. You can do anything you want to, to get it made. And everybody says, the author said it. Accounting is the language of business. Wow. It is. Kind of a simple alphabet, huh? Five types of accounts and debits and credits. That's everything. Oh, the first thing I want you to memorize is that debit means left. The second thing I want you to memorize is assets going to left. Everything else is common sense. Is it common sense that your assets equal your liabilities plus your equity? All your possessions, either you own them or you don't. Come on. Yeah, of course it's true, right? Of course it's true. Let it be true. Use what you already know. In every single one of your classes, use what you already know and layer new knowledge on top of it. Learning something that's cold without any context, right? Anything you're related to is really hard. Language is kind of like that. For me, I tried to learn German in high school. I tried to use English to learn German. It doesn't work, does it? You gotta ignore English and you learn German. Same in Spanish or any other language, huh? Right? And it makes languages hard, right? Because you start from scratch and try to unlearn something else when you do it in a way, right? Or ignore something else when you do it, okay? This isn't like that. The only thing new here is debits mean left and assets are on the left. And then everything else is going to be common sense. Okay, now what do we want to do? Now this is where your brain's going to hurt just a little bit. What we want to do is we want to merge the debits and credits with this accounting model. This is all called the accounting model. We're going to merge these debits and credits with the balance sheet and the income statement. Oh, I didn't say that with income statement. It's kind of obvious. It's kind of this would be the income statement. The balance sheet of the assets, liabilities, and equity. The income statement is the revenues and expenses. Sound good, guys? Okay. So this will be the income statement over here. And you already knew that. I know you read it. But still, good to make those connections. It's funny how we can read something. I asked you guys, I think, or maybe it was a later class last time, how many of you learn by reading? Nobody raises their hand. That's really not true. We all learn by reading. We just can't feel it. We can't see it. It's really hard to do it. You learn by reading. You really do. You learn a tremendous amount by reading each chapter. Read Reading each chapter really slow. There's only 15 pages of chapter. You can really slow and try to understand each page. And you won't. But then when you start working the problems and you hear me talk about it, you will. It's really layering it on because I'm assuming you read this and you already have a familiarity before I start talking about it. Is, it, is there anybody sitting here that has not read the first chapter or the first couple chapters yet? Not in this room. The later one will be. Bigger. Okay, that's fantastic, guys. Yes. You're going to be great. Okay, it's going to work really good. Always have read it. Always have read it. When we're doing bonds towards the end of the course, if you've read about bonds, it's just going to be, wow, that's cool. It teaches you. This is really powerful stuff, too. It's really good to know. I understand now I understand how to invest in bonds, kind of, even, right? By virtue of just learning what they are and how to account for them. If you can't account for something, you don't know what it is. I'm sorry. You don't know what it is if you can't account for it. And if you know it's an asset, you're going to know how to account for it. Come on. Right? So if you've read about bonds before you come in, it's going to be easy. If you haven't read, it's going to go, oh my gosh, what's going on? It's terrifying. Okay? You do learn by reading. We just don't realize we do. We do it all the time. You guys, some of you sitting in here looking at Facebook every once in a while. Okay? You get messages coming in or something or email or something. I don't care. It's all right. You can do that, right? You're learning. You're learning about whatever you're reading about. I don't mean you're learning like you're developing yourself as a human being. You might be learning what you and your friend are going to do this weekend, but you're learning, right? You're acquiring information. Okay, let's put the debits and credits in here, and I want you guys to do this. Notice the assets are over there on which side? Left. Okay, this is the left side over here. Does everybody agree? It needs to total up to this right side over here. Let's add debits and credits just by using left and right. What do you think the normal balance must be in an asset, which means that's how we increase it? We are going to increase assets with what? Assets are on the left, and the synonym for left is debit. So guess what? You increase assets with debits. Why do you increase assets with debits? Not because they haven't memorized. 
because they're on the left, assets are on the left, and debit leave left. Okay, you don't, accounting's wonderful. You don't have to memorize what to add and subtract. You don't have to remember what to add and subtract. What we always do is we take the difference between the debits and the credits, okay? So if you increase assets with a debit, guess how you reduce them? With a credit. Again, why do you increase assets with a debit? Because they're on the left. Why do you reduce them with a the credit? You could be increasing with a debit. Got it. So, what will a normal balance be for an asset? One of my assets is cash. I put 100000 in the bank. What do I do with the account? Debit. <clears throat> what if I take 10 out? I'll credit it. How much cash will I have? 90. And the normal balance then is what? The balance at that point is a 90 debit. Can I ever get a credit in cash? Negative cash is how the bank overdrafts. You write more checks than the money you put in the bank, right? Don't do that, okay? But it happens in businesses. They just tell you about it, charge you a bunch of fees. But you know what? Now you owe the bank money. It's a liability. It's not an asset anymore. All assets have a debit balance. Okay. Come in. Okay. Okay, so everybody got the idea? Increase assets with debits, reduce them with credits, right? Okay, the liabilities and equity are over here on the right-hand side. Guess what for both of them? Because they're on the right-hand side, how do you increase them? With the credits. I am going to increase liabilities with credits because they are on the right, and credit is a synonym with right, huh? Got it? Synonym for Guess how you can increase equity, seeing as they're over there on the right? Credits. We're not kidding. How are you going to reduce both of them? Seeing as they're over on the right-hand side, you're increasing the credits. Debits. Okay, now this just may seem like, man, this is arbitrary. Sure it is. It's man-made. Created it. Equity, how are we going to reduce it? Debits. If you know this, you have it made. If you know this, you have it made. If you don't, this is going to be a rough semester. Actually, if you don't know it, by after a month or so, we'll do this again next semester. We're not kidding. It's just true. Because I'm going to assume you know it, and we're just going to be going to 90 miles an hour. You look at that, that, even the first quiz, does it look long? No? You know how to work it yet? It's not real long if you know exactly what you're doing. How about the first test? Does it look long? Yeah, probably. But you know, by the time you get to the test, you have it wired. Right? You really know how to do this stuff. Okay? All right. Now let's take it up a, a notch. Oh, by the way, do you see that that's going to make the total debits here equal the total credits over here? That makes sense? Total debits and the assets are going to equal the total liabilities plus equity. It just will if we're constantly putting things on the left and the right. That's all these debits and credits mean. Put it on the left and the right. Revenues do what to your wealth? The revenues. And expenses are a subset of equity, okay, guys? They're a subset of equity. Temporary. I'm going to keep track of them for one year at a time. Temporary. Okay, the revenues as I earn revenues, what happens to my wealth? You sell stuff, right? Sell goods and services. You become more or less wealthy as a, as a result of that. More. It's how you earn wealth, isn't it? So as the revenues go up, what else is going up? Equity. How do you increase equity? With a credit. Why do you increase equity with a credit? Because it's on the right and credit and right mean the same thing, right? Everybody good? So revenues are increased with what then? It's got to be credits. Because they are temporary equity accounts. Everybody good? So as I increase revenue, I'm increasing equity. That's it. Okay, and we'll show you how we actually do that. Okay? All right. If you put too much in a revenue account and you want to fix it, you don't cross a line through it. It's in the computer anyway, right? You don't put a line through it and change the number. What you do is you do what to it if there's too much in it? Reduce it with a debit. So we, we don't usually debit revenue accounts, but if you put too much in one and you want to fix it, you debit it, okay? Everybody got it? Guess what expenses have to be? Two reasons expenses need to be. Well, what do you think expenses might be? Let's see, revenues are credits, so expenses probably ought to be the opposite. Because you don't have to remember what to add and subtract. You take the difference between credits and debits. So they got to be debits. I heard somebody say they have to be debits. So to make the expenses be debits, 
If I incur an expense, I'm going to debit it, huh? One reason is they have to be the opposite of revenues. Everybody good with that? What's another reason? What do all of your costs do to your wealth? As your expenses go up, your costs go up. What's happening to your net income? It's going down. Or your net loss, your loss position is going up, right? What's happening to your wealth as your net income goes down? You have less, don't you? Everybody agree? All the expenses the cost you incur, right, are what? That's wealth. How does it reflect less wealth? Let's see. Wealth is represented by equity, right? It's increased with a credit. Why is equity increased with a credit? Because it is on the... Everybody good? So, how would you reduce equity? And the debit. So, as you're increasing your expenses, as you're increasing all those costs, you must be debiting the temporary equity account. Everybody, does that make sense to you? Does it make sense to you all? You got it? Okay. If you put too much in an expense account, how would you fix it? Reduce it with the credit. Okay. One more thing here then. Right? One more thing. Is net income. Now, net income is not an account. Net income is just the difference between your revenues and expenses, between all your sales, right, all your revenues, and all your costs of expenses. How much you earned in the period. Does that make sense? Is it a debit or a credit? I'm going to take all my total credits for revenues here, and I'm going to subtract all my total for expenses, debits here. Is that going to be a net credit or a net debit when I take the difference? If the credit revenues are bigger than the expenses debits, I will have a net credit, which will be net income. And the net income we are going to add to our wealth huh? with a credit. Credits increase wealth? Yeah, because they're on the right. What if I had a net loss? What would a net loss look like, you guys? It'd be a debit. What does net loss mean? My revenues are less than my expenses. My credits are less than my debits. It would give me a net debit. And where would that net loss go? It would give me less wealth. It would reduce my equity. It would reduce my retained earnings. This left right stuff's going to work really good for us. Okay? Now, I want to do one more thing here, you guys. Are debits and credits good or bad? Right? I know I'm supposed to quit in a minute. I'll steal two minutes from you. Are debits or credits good or bad? Assets equal liability plus equity. Revenues less expenses is net income. Have this down next time. In fact, take a piece of paper and write all this down on it. Right? Yes, sir. Wouldn't assets equal uh, No, assets do not equal net income. Your that net income is only only going to be in retained earnings. Can't you have assets contributed? Can't you have assets you borrowed money to buy? Ah, yeah. So no, 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 no. That's the only part of it. Right? Okay. Let's do good and bad. Debit and credit. A lot of people think debit means good and credit means bad, or vice versa. Well, what do debits do to assets? Increase. Is that good? Yeah, it's working, it's working, isn't it? Good. What do debits do to liabilities? Decreasing. So if I debit liabilities, I'm decreasing it, right? I'm doing debit here. That's working out well, huh? But what does debit do to equity? Decreases. Now it's bad. So two of them works really good, one of them not so hot. What do debits do your revenues? Reduce them. Oh, that's not good. What do debits do your expenses? Increase it. Oh, that's not good. So you'd be right 40% of the time. Do you see why I don't want you to use good and bad? It'll drive you insane when students try to do this all the time. Let's use plus and minus. Okay? Let's switch it to that. And we'll do this again. I do everything again. Partly because I can't remember what I did, right? Okay, let's do debit and credit for plus and minus. Does debit mean plus? For assets, yeah. It means plus, doesn't it? They increase it, it means plus. That looks good. What do debits do to liabilities, though? Decrease. That nah, means minus. What about equity? Decrease. It means minus. What about revenues? So those aren't any good. What about revenues? 
decrease, it means minus. What about expenses? Increase. Oh, that one worked. You'd be right 40% of the time. Do you want to use plus and minus? No. One more time. What does debit mean? Left. What does credit mean? Right. What else does it mean? Nothing. To you guys. You're going to be a big group, I can tell. And if I didn't bore anybody today, I promise I will tomorrow. Or the day after tomorrow. Get on your schedule that we're getting together for some reason next time, Wednesday in the afternoon. I'll try to send you an email today. I worked in the garden yesterday, or the yard yesterday. No. Why? Depends on what whether you use bank or yourself. Uh, a debit with a debit card, uh, when you use your debit card it reduces an asset. Right. Oh, with, with the bank? Like just looking at those as accounts. Like you're saying, come about to get your debits. Well, you're, from the bank's perspective, uh, they have an asset from you when you use your credit card. So you're increasing your liability when you use your credit card to the bank. They are increasing their receivable from you. And then on the debit card, uh, the cash you have in the bank, you get your asset, but it's the bank's liability, they owe you money. And then when you use your debit card, you are reducing what they owe you, but you're also reducing how much you can pass it to them. So now, don't, don't, don't do that. No, but, but when we get to that stuff, it all makes sense. Because are you doing your account or theirs? You're on the opposite yeah. side of the deal. And then name debit card and credit card mean okay. something to them, not to you. Okay. Right? They just like it. They use credit card because uh, you're, you're getting the credit from them. Right. And then they use debit card because it puts something different than credit card, I think. That doesn't make any sense. They do it specifically to confuse. Yeah. Anyone have that? Do you want to? Yeah. I try to do this. Yeah. I'm going to write down everything in this accounting equation. Mm -hmm. And then I right. want to use this. Okay. Write, write everything down in this accounting equation down here. Every piece. Okay? And then solve for what you don't know. Write down everything you do know and solve for what you don't know. And what will there'll be is two unknowns, right? Mm -hmm. On most of them, but there'll only be one unknown on one of them. So if you have an income statement and you have revenues and expenses, you could calculate that income. And see, I, I did that like well I was do all three of them with it. Just like an mm, income uh, statement. I don't think I'd make it look like that. I think I'd do it like oh, actually I'd kill that out. No. I think what I'd do is Because I figure you have revenue and you have No, but you know what I was talking about. 